Good morning, people from a windy Denmark. From windy Denmark, it is cold and windy today. I figured that we could do a new episode. Yes, I don't know why I chose to choose to do it outside. Now it is so cold. It seems like we are assessing the Earth star. The wind is really with us today, which might actually also be why. There has been a lot of shift happening with our body lately, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have felt it with the release of back pain or the release of some kind of sickness or illness. You might have felt sick the past month, but something is being released fully. Welcome back. It was too cold, and this was actually hours after I recorded the first part. I took this book because I knew that there was more information about the Earth star. And I feel like I probably didn't mention, didn't I? I feel the reason why we are talking about the Earth star today is because we are activating something very important when it comes to that. So I'm just going to go through what I see in this book. I will cut out what I read, but I will share my findings with you guys. So the first piece I found here, um, and you know, just so you guys know, the Earth star is down here. We, oui. it's this one. And it says here, it's located in the nerve endings on the sole of the feet. Interesting. Moving with us as we travel, it serves as a grounding cord for our light body to connect to the center of the earth and it allows us to connect with our multi-dimensional selves oh my god which for me is a big sign of us communicating or connecting with our higher self now the sun is shining outside what is happening anyway i also am packing packing pack hanged myself in because it's cold but i'm going to take the book again if we have found out more things about this right now this is just what i go through so now i'm finding the next chapter where we should learn something about the earth star but this is cozy i'm learning with you guys okay earth star chakra in this system the earth star is too arms lengths below the feet so that is actually i would say quite far down think about it that your feet your soles are connected that deep down into the earth that's actually pretty badass and it actually for me makes me more aware of the energy that we have around us or around me let me know if you feel the same. True, which we exchange energy with the Earth Goddess. <gasps> I love that so much. Wow. Hmm. All right. Then we have here. What do we have here? Okay, I found more. Earth Chakra, known as a subpersonal chakra, it is below the feet and receives energy through the chakras in the feet hmm. this chakra roots us to the earth's core and its emfs it creates an energetic bridge to the earth that enables us to anchor into the physical plan hmm. because of this chakra our lives are recorded in the matrix of the earth star chakra whoa described earlier damn as are the other four subpersonal chakras located below the first chakra and before the earth star chakra. Wow. At the end of our lives, we disconnect from the earth star chakra. Whoa. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to take that again. That's actually... Wow. Well, I guess it makes sense. It just... Wow. At the end of our lives, we disconnect from the Earth Star Chakra and we rise through the conduit, conduit of light composing the Hera line. Hera line. Didn't I see something about that? Yeah, here. 
Para Center. Very interesting. So from the U star and up. Huh. That's so interesting. That is so interesting. Well, it makes sense because I have read a lot about like if people pass away, that it's not like we go down, like we go up. Our soul shoots up. Which makes sense with this, right? Okay, let's see. What did it say? Disconnect from the Earth star and rise through the conjurate of light composed, composing the hair line. Passing through all chakras as we journey upward. After arriving at the seventh chakra, we perceive the light of the soul star as a white tunnel and we exit to higher dimensions. Oh my god. The next one we're going to talk about is the soul star. And for people who don't know, let me show you. Soul star, it is on top of your head. It's very interesting and it really shows that when you pass away, you you, you know, you shoot up. It's interesting to think about that you actually shoot up through all your chakras. Okay, so the last, is that the last? Well, I think there's more somewhere. That is very interesting. I mean, I love this book. I haven't nearly touched upon that much of it. But let's see, seven, nine. Earth Chakra Systems. Okay, I'm gonna read this. I don't know if it has something to do with the chakra, but I guess it has. Because it says, is there a vortex in your area? Many of us have vortexes in our home or our land or nearby, but haven't stopped to label them as much. These mini chakras can affect us positively or negatively. Before we can use the exercise in part three to access beneficial vortex energy or clear harmful energy, we must first discover them. Think about any areas in your environment that typically grab you, that shift your emotions, thoughts, physical energy, or even your spiritual well-being on a consistent basis. If the vortex is destructive, you will recall a downward shift in mood. Mm negative thinking, loss of vitality, or a sense of dark presence, or energy sapping your strength. If the area is uplifting, you will remember an increase in optimism, joy, and peacefulness, increased whim and vigor, <laughs> a sense of unity and appreciation, or the presence of a loving spiritual guidance. You can also walk around your home, your land, or an area near you to sense these same energies. It is easiest to spot a vortex at dusk or dawn, as this is the time when the veil between the worlds become weaker and you are best able to sense the energetic or spiritual. You will sense a distinct difference in energy, whether it is moving upward or downward. Wow, the word, right? I just love the sound of a, of a, of a big book. <laughs> is it just me? I'm just fascinated about books. Hmm. You can also use a pendulum or dowsing rods. The weighted object will flow with spiraling electromagnetic energy and make it easier to detect a vortex. Take your pendulum, first stand close by a subject, suspected vortex, but not in it. Hold your pendulum level with the potential vortex. If the vortex is in the ground, hmm, so it doesn't have to be in the ground. Hold it above the ground. If it is up in a tree, ah, rise the pendulum as high over your head as possible. Now test the region near the vortex to see if you pick up any movement. I actually never thought about that when a vortex is around us because yeah, that is a real thing, right? But it, I don't think, I mean, if you think about it, I have been like, okay, yeah, if where the stone hinge are or is, there is probably a vortex. But I haven't really been thinking about that I could can be a vortex here in my home <laughs> or out in the garden or, you know, somewhere else. That's actually very interesting. Next, move near to the vortex, spin and grasp the, pe the pendulum. 
near or in the area you are testing. Does it start moving in bro broader or wider circles as compared to the first spot? Does it swing clockwise or counterclockwise? If there is significant shift in the movement of the pendulum, you have probably discovered a vortex. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's it. There's not much more. Not from what I could find. Well, there's probably a lot more, but... I also think that it's good that we actually recognize these, like, vortexes and, like, close them down. Because that is something you can do with your own energy. Close it down. You can do it by clapping, like we talked about. If it's in a mirror, I will link... Um, the video somewhere up here where I talked about mirror magic because I talked about how to close off a mirror. I like to ask my spirit guides to assist if there is something that needs to be closed down. Yeah, I had it with the hallway out here many years ago where there was a weird energy, so it could actually have been a vortex. And I closed it off with um, using the singing ball and I close it off with making a little ritual where I put a round circle with salt and I put rose petals and I made my little um, only light can be here only light can come true and only light can surround this area it's what I always use if I feel like there's a negative energy I always say only light can be here, only light can come through, only light can surround me. And I say it until I feel that the energy is gone. I actually had a moment yesterday, it was so weird. It was after I talked with a friend, I wanted to go out of the room and I felt something um, behind me, like something like a big shadow kind of thing. And oh, I just got to shiver down my spine and I said that and then it was gone. So I don't know what it is or what it was, but you know, sometimes, depending on what has happened in the area, there obviously can be something coming true, especially if you are a person of light. If you're working with light, dark energies are attracted to you. But obviously, we have our spirit guides to make us aware if there is something. But if you work with the spirit world, obviously, you do create some kind of bridge. And I also feel that is why we today are activating and talking about the Earth star. But I will take the book again so that we can read through the rest of what Carl Gray is saying to us. But I'm happy that we learned <laughs> magic. And if I didn't show the book, this is the book. It's actually a book that I got from one of you guys. But I think that I never really found out who gave it to me because there was no notes. And if you want to give me things that I can unbox on camera, the link is down below in the description box for the Amazon. But okay, let's see if there's something here. Assessing the Ulster. When it comes to spirituality, many people feel a need to access higher plans and different spiritual dimensions for guidance and inspiration. It makes sense because we just learned that it's connected to your, what was it, higher dimensional self, which is actually pretty uh, badass. It's connected to, yeah, your higher self, the spirit world, which makes sense, right? Why it's so important. Spiritual dimensions for guidance and inspiration. And I get why, but there are so many ways in which the earth can support us. There's so much wisdom she can impart to us. Import. The Earth Star is a wise old soul. She's been here for millions of years. She's intelligent and she knows how to survive. She's been witnessed to so much and yet we never seem to think of appreciating her for spirit the spiritual guidance and support. Hmm. When I teach people how to connect to the Earth, Taking the time to connect to the Earth Star will enable you to be less clumsy. <laughs> we like that. More in your body and more consciously aware of the part you have agreed to play while you are here. 
you choose to come to earth not to some other dimension i also feel that it will be easier for us now that we know that it's actually connected to our souls to our nerves yeah when it comes to us visualizing the connection and the light yeah take time today to get grounded connect to your earth star chakra allows you to draw divine healing in the and support directly from mother earth allow her to import it's like what the hell is that uh allow her to import her guidance and wisdom through a download of raw earthly energy with this simply meditation imagine that there are great roots going down from your feet to the center of the earth see them traveling down to layers and layers of earth when they reach the center of earth imagine them wrapping around a huge crystal of your choice i wonder what crystal you would choose or what crystal do you see and feel for me it's angel light is that i think that is what it's called the blue soft stone crystal kind of thing angel light for some reason it's angel light a huge crystal of your choice and anchoring you right into it take a deep breath and imagine light traveling up the roots into your feet and into your body Know that this light represents earthly wisdom and that you are dialing into it. Spend some time feeling grounded and connected. You can even think about issues you need guidance on and imagine that your roots are like straws drawing love and support directly from the heart of Mother Earth. I am connected and aligned with Mother Earth that is absolutely beautiful people so today we are connecting with the beautiful earth star yes but i also think that is going to be it for today we learned a very important lesson today i feel when it comes to connecting with our higher self with everything else that we have been speaking about the past weeks i feel this is the the next step so i hope you guys enjoyed this i know i did let me know your feelings with this and with the crystal what crystal do you visualize and yeah then i will see you guys in my next video Bye.